Hey guys, welcome back to the shed. Today we're rebuilding carburetors. Okay, so let's start off. This is a Walbro WB32, and there's a few things you're going to need. So, first of all, you're going to need a rebuild kit for your carburetor. If you search online, you should be able to find the correct kit for that. Next up, we've got a magnetic tray so we don't lose any of the tiny little bits that are in here. We've got some cleaning cloths, which are microfiber, it doesn't really matter, it's just to clean any bits up there, disgusting and dirty. We've got some intake and carb cleaner for when we get that thing apart. We've got a piece of tubing to check our check valve. We've got a couple of different size Phillips, a couple of different size flatheads and we have a pick tool as well for the gauzes that are inside here. As you can see this car is pretty disgusting I mean look at that, that is, whoa, that's something else that is. So essentially we're going to take this apart and then clean the hell out of it. First of all I'm going to start off with just cleaning off as much as I can around the outside of this before I even think about opening it up just because mine's so filthy dirty and it's been sat around for a long time and it's well in need of a rebuild now. By cleaning off any excess stuff first, it's gonna minimize any particles that might end up in the carb after I've finished putting it back together. So it doesn't really matter where you start, just remember where things came from. I'm gonna start on this face here with the Walbro logo these will be done up fairly tight make sure you're not leaning any on any of these pins which are your high and low i'm going to be tuning this carb at some point so it doesn't really matter how i move these at the moment um, make sure it's on a solid surface and put some pressure down in there and then just turn that way you're not going to strip any screws out okay make sure you collect all your screws up so you don't lose any what your magnetic trays for it look like they've all got a little washer on them as well so make sure the washers go back on when you put this back together okay, that's number four now getting this apart ooh, that was easier than I thought it would be so sometimes it can be a bit of a pain in the ass so you need to pay attention to what order the screens and gaskets come off so it looks like on the main body of the carburetor, we've got the Teflon one first, as you can see that there. That's that one. And then we have another rubber filter underneath that, which looks like it's uh, well stuck on there. It's worth just checking with clean hands before, before you pull this too far apart. Make sure that your replacement parts match the ones you're taking off otherwise back on the net and do a bit more hunting and that one matches up nicely to that one there as we can see that over there perfect so hopefully this is the right kit teflon one as well matches up lovely right make sure they go back into the clean bag so we aren't contaminating them now as you can see, this gasket is pretty brittle, it's just peeling off in chunks, so who knows, it might have run for another 100, 100 hours, or it, uh, it might have given up in the next tent, so it's worth going in and replacing these things. Alright, that's as much as I can get off my nail, I'll come back to that later and clean it up properly. Let's get the rest of this apart. So as you can see here, we've got a build up of green gunk. Who knows what that is, could be anything. If that goes around your system, clogs up one of these nozzles, your engine ain't gonna work. So, good job we're in here. And also, you can see our gauze in here that we'll be replacing. We'll get that out as well. Take your pick and carefully, without marring or damaging the, the surface that's in there, pick that out. They may look clean, but chances are you've got some microscopic contaminants in there. 
Right, so let's flip this round to the other side and start taking this apart. Now you may want to put a bit of cloth down your table so you don't damage this face plate now because we're going to be taking off these screws with the same method. So to save yourself any worry, put another piece of cloth down, that way you're not damaging it. Right, with enough force, take your screws out. Now these look like these got a little wash on as well. Two, three, and four. Right, okay. So this side is the side with the diaphragm. So let's just take this off. Ooh, there we go. A little bit of coaching that's come straight off. So this is the diaphragm underneath, and which is most likely perished. And as you can see already, just by peeling that off, it's stuck to absolutely stuck to this. So um let's get rid of that so you can see from this we have another gasket on here so we'll take that off and replace that as well once again you can check with clean hands that your stuff in your kit matches that as well before you go taking it off we've got one in there that one there that looks pretty accurate without even getting out of the bag i'm pretty confident that this kit will match up with what we've got here so you can start peeling this off. Try not to use any metal tools to peel these off because you can damage these mating faces and then you'll get an air leak and then it won't work. So it's patience over brute force, I'm afraid. So that's come off pretty easy much just by hand. As you can see, it's got a bit of corrosion on here. What I'll do is I'll clean it up with a scotch by later and that side as well because that's mank. Okay, so a couple of things then. We've got our second gauze in here now. It's held in by a little retaining clip. We also have a metal plate here held in by two screws, which underneath are two more gaskets. We've then got our float level needle here. So essentially, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take a straight edge, lay across the mating face here, and just check what that float height is. So when I put the new one in, I can adjust it to suit. Okay, so I can see that that sits up from that metal plate about a couple of mil. So at least I'll know where to set that when I put this back together. Okay, so moving further down into this section, same again. Apply pressure straight down and then start to twist. There's two screws there. That should hold this metal plate. Getting that pick underneath there so I can lift that up. A couple of different gaskets underneath this one. All right, and then we're gonna have to make sure we get the correct order for when we put our new gaskets in from our kit. And it looks like we've got the thicker one on the outside and we've got the thinner one with the flap on the inside, which from underneath covers up this gauze here. That's peeled off pretty easy and it's come away as one piece however i can assure you that is actually two pieces so make sure you get two gaskets in there the flap first and then the larger gasket on top and that goes face down so it goes metal with the gauze in and then the piece with the flap and then the larger cutout underneath. So now that that's out, we can see our high and our low screw in there, and it leaves us with the inlet needle lever. Now, this is spring-loaded. You don't need to undo this screw fully, so when you are unscrewing this, make sure you keep a finger on top of this float level, and then watch where this spring goes. Hopefully it won't fly out too far, um, but just be aware there is a spring underneath this. Okay, still got my finger on the float level and then it just pops straight out. So we can lift that out now. Hopefully. There we go, that comes out. This is into two pieces. So we've got the little bar and then we've got the lever itself. Pop that to the side. We've then got our spring which I don't believe they provide a new one in the kits. And then you've got the needle itself. 
So the only thing that we need to keep out of that really is the spring itself. And that's the deconstruction of the WB32. So I brought this red tubing out just to check the check valve, but it looks like it's sealed off, so shouldn't need to worry about that so much. And we can get down to cleaning now. Take your carb cleaner and what you're gonna to wanna to do is spray out all the little channels and passageways and make sure it's coming through clear and we're not getting bits of crap everywhere. It's probably a good idea to use a little tray when you're doing this so you don't get carb cleaner absolutely everywhere. But it will dry off pretty quickly. I'm only in the shed so it doesn't really matter too much for me. In fact, it may even get in the way. Don't get this stuff in your eyes because it's going to bloom and sting. So just start off, work your way around methodically and make sure you're cleaning out every single hole. Now the beauty of using a nozzle is you can really get into gaps and get some pressure in there to clean out any bits of dirt that's got stuck. Now that you've given that a good clean, take your cloth and get rid of any other bits and stuff that are stuck on the outside that you've just put carb cleaner on. They should be a bit looser now, so they should come off no problem. And as you can see from the water inside here, there's a lot of crap that's come out of there, so well overdue for a clean. Make sure your butterfly's nice and clean as well. Now if you've got any bits in these channels, you can use your pick just to get them out. I wouldn't recommend putting any pressure on them, just use it to sort of agitate the area and just get rid of anything that might be stuck in there. Make sure you clean up all the mating faces as well on these carbs. If you've got any old gasket that's stuck on and causing you any grief, you can either use a bit of green scotch bright so it's not very harsh, or you can use a Stanley blade to lightly go over the edge. Don't gouge it in, just make sure the Stanley blade is flat to the mating face itself. If you have access to an air compressor, blow out all these ports again, just to make sure any debris is gone. I don't have one, so I've just blown in the, blown in the holes using my lung power, which isn't ideal, but at least it's getting any excess crap out of there. So once you're happy with the main carburetor body, grab yourself a cup of tea and we'll move on to the other little bits. Okay, so same process here. As before, we had this gasket that's really stuck on here. Patience over brute force. Let's try and get some of this gasket off. First of all, I'm just gonna use my hands to try and pick any bits off. This really isn't shifting. So from there, I'm gonna get a Stanley blade and try and get underneath it. So carefully, if you lay this Stanley blade flat, so it touches several of the faces at once, then hopefully you can get underneath the gasket and just go slow, don't force anything. This is aluminium at the end of the day, this blade will cut into that. And if you look very closely, you can see a line that's the, the risen line around where this gasket sits. So if you try and get your blade underneath the bit that isn't that, you should be able to lift it up. Okay, so that's the majority of the gasket off. We can start cleaning it with carb cleaner now and hopefully the last little bits and pieces have come off. If not, we can just use a bit of scotch bright just to tidy that up. So there's one main port on this and that is that tube there. So we're gonna get, make sure that's nice and clean. The rest of it is just a backing plate. Okay, so I'm just going to use a bit of scotch bright really, really lightly, just on the bits where there's leftover gasket. So when you're happy that you've got a gasket lip nice and clean, just hit it with some more carb cleaner just to get any little bits and pieces off or out of any holes. That way you're really minimising the risk of having any particles in your carb when you put this thing back together. Now that we've done that bit, 
pull that aside, which leaves us with two more pieces to clean. So we've got the diaphragm cover here, which you can see mine is pretty corroded. I'm gonna give that a clean up with a Dremel and a little wire brush on the outside, not on the inside because obviously that has to seal as well. So I'll use a bit of Scotch Brite for the inside. Then we also have this inner plate, which is also quite corroded. So I'll probably just Scotch Brite that and then we'll replace the little gauze as well. So I'm just gonna clean these up and then we'll put it back together. Right then, we've got these two little pieces cleaned up. They're nice and shiny now, free of corrosion. And we're just gonna replace this mesh in here. So take your pick and we're gonna try and get this little retaining clip out from underneath there. So I'm gonna try and force this underneath that just to try and lift it up. This might be a little bit tricky, persevere with it and maybe it might be easier to push it from the other side. There you go, that's come out there. So get rid of the old one. This new mesh is much thinner, so it should filter much better. A little bit of crud in there, so I'm just gonna give that a little bit of a clean of this. Just to try and aggravate that and loosen that up. There's just a lot of build up of additives in there that would be filtered normally into your fuel system. Could potentially block up one of those holes in the carburetor, so always good to get things as clean as you possibly can when doing carbs. Doesn't look too bad at all. All right, so let's go ahead and put this mesh in, or gauze, whatever you want to call it. And then this little retaining clip, which could be a bit tricky once again. So I'd suggest putting one side in, um, holding it in with your finger, and then trying to squeeze the other side in. And that's gone in like so. Nice and easy, I'm just gonna just go around the edge of this just to make sure that's seated nicely, which it seems pretty damn good. Cool, so that's that piece done. Right, we're gonna need to sort out what bits we need now from our kit to start rebuilding the carb itself. Your kit may come with extra pieces, so these pieces up here are extra pieces that don't actually go in this carb. Um, there's a lot of um, similarities in the different carbs that Walbro provide, so make sure you get the right bits to go back into your carburetor. So, we're going to start off with this piece here. So this piece is going to go underneath here, that softer piece underneath with the flap on it, followed by this harder gasket on top. Line them up as best you can. Which I'm doing a terrible job of at the minute. Probably because it's so damn cold in the shed. Now that can go back into here. Take our little two little screws that came out of there in the first place. So these should help the uh, help the gasket to line as well underneath. Now just screw the first one in loosely so you can get the second one in and you're not forcing anything or stripping any threads. Make sure they go in straight, don't cross thread them. Let's see now, and then just nip them up first. And then, you don't want to over tighten these. They're only hand nipped up, they're only small screws so you don't want to thread them either. Yes, we have vibrations from a paramotor, but hand tight nip and then that should be perfectly fine. So now that that's done, let's move on to our float needle and float lever. So you're gonna need the needle itself, the lever, that little pin, and don't forget the spring that we took out earlier. So try not to adjust the height of this either because that will adjust your pop-off value. And if you haven't got a pressure test meter, then that could be quite difficult. So drop that spring in, drop the needle in. This could be a bit fiddly, so you've got to try and get the little fork around the pinhead whilst getting the spring in place and that little pin as well. There you go, that looks about right. Okay, so now that's all together. 
just tighten up this screw, just hold that down in place to start with. There we go. Don't do that one up too tight, it's just a retaining screw so we don't need to cram that down. Right, now this is where we want to make sure that our lever is at the right height. So if you remember at the start of the video, I tested to see what level the, the, uh, the arm was. Um, and this looks like it's down just a little bit. So you can use your flathead screwdrivers here just to adjust these. And that looks about right. So now that we've got that done, We'll want to put our diaphragm on and the gasket that goes with that. Now these diaphragms once again have a little pin head, so that just needs to hook into the other side of that arm. So start from the front and then you can slide it back like so. That's then located onto that locating pin there at the top and here at the bottom right. And then the same with the gasket, that can go straight on top as well. And then on top with the plate, the outer casing. Okay, and we're halfway there. Take the screws for that outer casing, pop them in one by one, just loosely at first. And then we can tighten them up properly in a minute. Make sure all the washers are with them as well. I'd recommend going in a crisscross pattern just so you get nice and even. Uh, distribution on pressure across your gaskets. That way you're not going to get any bulging, etc. And just last little nip up there, make sure it's nice and tight. Perfect. Now then, flip it over and we've got the remaining side. So we've got three bits here. We've got this gauze that sits down in this hole, so we'll place that in there first. Now it's like a little dish, so um, all you want to do is just push that down. Now you need to find something round that will go in there, um, maybe the flat end of a pencil will do, as long as it seats this properly. Um, that's a bit big, so I'll just pop this in there, so it's just got to go down, just so it sits in there nicely and makes a good seal and doesn't go down too far and uh, scrunches up so it doesn't actually um, do what it's doing now. So a bit of a finite art, just get it down there nice and even so it's going to sit in place and, uh, and filter basically, that's what it's doing. And once that's in there, we can now add our final um, gaskets. So make sure they line up and they go the proper way around. This one sits in here. You can line these up by looking which way this gasket goes and then this Teflon one should line up here. So it should block two holes on the right hand side and then one hole on the left hand side and then place our gasket on top and then our covering plate you can have a look make sure that goes around the right way and it's got a dome at the top here so that's fairly straightforward oh it looks like there's some locating pins so even easier you could pin that to the underside of this and then place that on here That looks like it's gone on nice and straight. Fantastic. Get your remaining four screws, put them in lightly by hand at first, once again. Not really applying any pressure to the plate itself. And then once they're all in, oh, once they're all in, 
go in a crisscross pattern. Tighten them all up to create your seal. And just do one final nip to make sure. And you're done. That's your car rebuilt. Thanks for watching this video guys. I hope you found it helpful. Next time I'll most likely be moving on to how to paint an engine and then we can look at the finer little details that are going to bring everything together. I really appreciate your continued support. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you love it and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. As some of you may know, we've now started our training. So those vlogs are coming out at the same time as these Power Fix It vlogs are. So it won't be long before we're flying. Hopefully it'll be by spring. So go and check those out and I'll see you up in the air.